the first movie on my list of best Blu-ray to 4K upgrades in my collection is Edge of Tomorrow. Tom Cruise, Emily Blunt in Groundhog Day, basically. This movie is awesome. I love this movie. I saw it in the theater when it came out, and I was very impressed with it. And unfortunately, it just didn't do very well in the theater. And I, I'm not sure what exactly happened, but the movie deserved better because it actually is a very, very good film. Um, and this one, everybody wanted this movie on 4K. I saw it all the time on forums, online. Everybody wanted Edge of Tomorrow on 4K. When are we getting this movie on 4K? And I can understand why, because the sound in this movie is awesome and it absolutely deserved an Atmos upgrade and after a while I lost hope that we were gonna actually get it on 4k and so I went out and bought it on blu-ray and I got it I put it in and the picture it looked good I mean it was clearly a blu-ray uh, but the picture looked pretty good and the sound it, it actually sounded really good here in my theater uh, I ran it through my processor, and so it upmixed it, and it, it sounded really good. But I still was hoping, ah, oh, we, need, we need the 4K. And shortly after I bought the Blu-ray, I mean, I mean, I'm talking like within a couple weeks, it was announced that it was coming out, and it was not very far off. And so I was like, ah, oh, you got to be kidding me. So it came out on 4K, and I didn't pick it up right away. Uh, I waited until it was like a Black Friday deal. I think I got it for like 10 bucks. It was an absolute steal. And uh, I got the Blu-ray, or sorry, I had the Blu-ray, I got the 4K, I put it in, and it looks perfect. The picture is incredible, and the sound is next level. That Atmos track is just, it is beautiful. I love it. And interestingly on this movie, there was a little bit of controversy. Not, I don't know if it's controversy, but people were a little miffed because they toned down the, the low bass rumble that happens like at the very beginning of the movie. I mean, I'm talking, I think, I think the screen is even still black when it happens. Like literally the movie has not started yet. And there's this low, low bass and people loved that in the, on the Blu-ray and on the 4K, they kind of toned it down a little bit. And people were like, wow, why did you take that away? Uh, my opinion, this is purely just me, but I didn't really see the point of it to begin with. So the fact that they toned it down, I was like, oh, yeah, that's fine. It's I, If I really, really need a low bass tone, I can buy like a demo disc or something. But anyways, Edge of Tomorrow, excellent, excellent 4K. So the movies on this list are specific to my collection. So what it is, is what movies did I own on Blu-ray? And when the 4K was released, the 4K was a significant enough upgrade that even though I already owned it, I had to have the 4K. Now, there are some examples uh, where the jump in quality from Blu-ray to 4K is even more significant than the ones I have on my list. For instance, uh, like Jaws, the 4K of Jaws, which I do have the 4K of Jaws, um, significant jump in quality. However, I never owned the Blu-ray, so I didn't have to buy it twice. And so that's why it's not on this list. The next movie on this list is The Man Who Knew Too Much. The Hitchcock thriller starring James Stewart and Doris Day. This movie is a classic film. And my history with this movie is I actually grew up watching this movie. Uh, growing up as a kid, my dad was quite strict about what movies we were allowed to watch. And so all of the movies that were current at the time, you know, in the 80s and 90s when I was growing up, almost all of them were off limits due to content <laughs> and so we we were kind of reduced to just watching um, older films now the plus side of this is that as a kid I was exposed to a lot of the classic films and so I grew up watching movies from the 50s 60s and even some into the 70s and so I was exposed to all of these 
these films that kind of form the basis of cinema. And, and I see those uh, influences in movies today that I, I wouldn't recognize if I hadn't had a good history of watching these movies growing up. And The Man Who Knew Too Much is up there at the top of the list. I, I, I grew up watching uh, almost all of the Hitchcock films. And this one, I, I always love this movie. I've seen it dozens of times, and it's super, super good. I, I, I love it. Um, and the thing about this movie is I bought it on Blu-ray, and I watched it, and I was actually disappointed. It looked pretty bad. Uh, it was not not good. Not not yeah, not great. Definitely not even good. It was it was pretty bad. I don't have any comparison screenshots between the 4K and the Blu-ray because I couldn't even get the Blu-ray to play in the player that I'm using now, my 4K player. So definitely had to buy the the 4K. Uh, but it looked pretty bad. And then when Universal came out with their Hitchcock box sets and the one that included The Man Who Knew Too Much, I knew I had to get it. I got it, and I watched it, and I I was expecting it to look good. Certainly, I was expecting it to look better than the Blu-ray, but I was shocked at how much better. It looks incredible. The fact that a movie this old, I mean, this movie is, how old is this movie? Oh my gosh, like 60 years old? I, I, I I don't even know off the top of my head. But to have a movie this old look this good, the detail, the colors, and the sound, they really, really upgraded the sound. I mean, all of the dialogue is just crystal clear. I was catching things from the dialogue. Like I say, I've seen this movie dozens of times, I'm, and it was like I was watching it for the first time because I was catching lines of dialogue that I had never uh, heard before. I'd never understood before. And this this one is such a massive upgrade. And I'm so, so glad that they've they've gone back and and started restoring these old Hitchcock movies. Uh, I could make a whole video about just the Hitchcock restorations because it's awesome. And this one is right up there. So stick around because before I get to my number one pick, I am going to give two bonus picks. These are movies that I own on Blu-ray and I wish, wish, wish so badly that they would do 4K restorations of them. As of yet, we don't have them, but I'm still holding out hope. The next movie on this list is The Fugitive. I love this movie and I had to have it on Blu-ray because that was all that was the best that was available at the time. Uh, when I built my theater. And so I bought the Blu-ray. It was kind of similar to Edge of Tomorrow where I was like, ah, I just I've kind of given up hope that the 4K is going to come out anytime soon. So I bought the Blu-ray and it it looked okay. It, it looks okay. The picture, it's a little, it's a little fuzzy. Uh, the resolution's not great. Uh, the sound, the sound was okay. The sound was okay. Uh, the color grading, not, not great. The, the skin tones, they didn't quite get it right. It doesn't, doesn't look quite right. Um, but I was just happy to have it on the highest quality that was available at the time because I love this movie. Harrison Ford, Tommy Lee Jones in this thriller. It, 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 it I'm going to sound like an old man here. They don't make movies like this anymore. This movie is so well crafted. It's so well paced. It's super, super high tension. The first third, and then things kind of slow down a little bit in the middle third, kind of let you catch your breath, kind of gather your thoughts and kind of regroup. And then in the third act, they just they just hit you. And it's so well done. And the music. So this movie came out in 1993. And the music, it's that synthesized soundtrack that was kind of the thing back then. So it has a dated feel. However, the music, it still works. It still adds to that tension and it doesn't come across as cheesy or corny like so many action movies of the 90s do today with their synthesized soundtracks, if that makes sense. Even though it it sounds dated and you hear it and you're like, oh yeah, that's definitely early 90s. 
it still works and it's still effective and it sounds good. So it's just such a great movie. Uh, and when the 4K was announced, I was so, so happy, but I was a little nervous. I'm like, oh, are they going to do a good job with the restoration? It came out. I watched some reviews and everybody was very, very happy with how it looked and sounded. And I was so relieved. And so I had intentions of buying it, but I actually ended up getting it for Christmas. And so I immediately brought it down here. I put it in. I wanted to see how it looked. I was just going to check out a few scenes and just kind of get an overview of, of how it looked. Threw it in and it sucked me right in. I mean, from the opening shot with those the credits flashing across the screen and like the clang, clang hitting, like like the, the jail cell door slamming shut, it just sucked me right in. I've seen this movie literally dozens of times and it just pulled me right in. This was the first time I had seen it the 4k in my theater and the sound it sounds so good and the picture just looks incredible i'm so happy with what they've done with this movie and i am so happy to have it on 4k and it was money well spent to get that upgrade from blu-ray to 4k previously i made a video highlighting my top five movie atmos soundtracks that are not typically on everybody else's list and if you want to check out that video, at the end of this video, there will be a card. Click on that, and it'll take you to that video. Check it out. It's really good. And the next movie on this list is The Truman Show. I love this movie. I love Jim Carrey. I think he's a great actor. But this movie really highlights just what kind of range he has as an actor. He can do more than just slapstick, zany comedy. He really is a legit actor. And he does such a good job in this movie. And the... The thing I love about, I love so many things about this movie, but but the the script, the story, the ideas that are in this movie, I, I feel like this movie is even more relevant today than when it came out almost 25 years ago. This idea of, of people's, somebody's life being broadcast out to the world, I mean, how do you get any more relevant <laughs> than than that you right and people's lives being used for entertainment for others and it's so well done and and the idea of escaping you know systems that were that were born into and and seeing outside of of what we see around us that there's more to life than just what's presented this movie it speaks to me in a way now that it it it's so much more significant now today than it was when I first saw it, when it first came out. Um, I enjoyed it back then, and I love it now. In this movie, you wouldn't think of it being like a real prime candidate for a 4K upgrade because it's, you know, it's not, a, you know, no action. It's not a lot of sound. It's mostly just people talking. But I'll tell you, this movie absolutely deserved the 4K upgrade. Now, with the Blu-ray, it didn't look great. And the skin tones were off. They're, they're not quite as off as they look in the screenshots that I have here. Um, they're not quite as red, you know, watching the movie as, as they look in this picture. But they're still off. And the 4K upgrade, they just nail the skin tones. They look perfect. They look excellent. And they did such a good job uh, getting this movie to look perfect. The visuals of this film are so striking. Uh, the town, this artificial environment that he lives in, it really comes out when you see the 4K image. It It's just, it looks incredible in how, it's hard to describe. It's, it's vibrant, but it's muted. And, and it's, it's over the top, but it's subdued. I, I don't know really how to describe it, but seeing it in 4k in the theater and, and the sound, I mean, like I say, the sound, you wouldn't think it's going to be that great in Atmos, but it sounds awesome. All of the dialogue is super, super clear. You can understand every word that they speak. It's, it's just great. And again, this was a no brainer. I, I had to have this movie on 4k and it's amazing. So before I get to my number one pick, I'm going to give you my two bonus movies that I wish they would release on 4K. And the first is North by Northwest. 
going back to Hitchcock again, this movie with all of the Hitchcock restorations that they've done, and they have done a lot. This one is, is not, I, 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 it hasn't been announced. I, I don't know if they're going to do this one. I, I hope they do. I don't know if they have good set of negatives that they can scan, but if they do, I hope they do. I own the Blu-ray on this move for this movie and it looks pretty bad. Um, it's just it's just not good and i wish and hope that they will do a 4k scan uh, do it right like they've done with all the other hitchcock movies so i'm holding out hope and my other bonus pick this one is at the top of my list for my wish list of movie that i want in 4k and it is the rock nicholas cage sean connery michael bay michael bay it, this is Michael Bay at his best. In my opinion, this is Michael Bay's best movie. This movie nails it. He takes all of his over-the-top, grandiose, you know, dramatic pans, and he does them right in this movie. He doesn't do them gratuitously, and and they're they're done to great effect, and the movie has a great script. It's got great characters, great acting, great action. It's got a great story. It a great setting on Alcatraz. It, this movie is just so awesome. I love this movie. And yeah, I have the Blu-ray and it looks okay. And I still love to watch it. And if they would put this out on 4K, I would be so, so grateful. But it's owned by Disney. And we all know the situation with Disney. So I don't know. I w We'll see. We'll see what happens. All right. My last and final movie on this list is The Matrix. I love this movie. I love everything about this movie. The sets, the script, the costumes, the music, the action, the, uh, the, the sound design, the technical, innovative camera angles, the stop motion, everything, everything about this movie. And I love the story. I love the philosophical themes, like the, these questions of existence and reality and free will and determinism and fate and just everything about this movie is so, so good. And I, this one is kind of like the Truman Show in that I loved it when I saw it when I was younger and it speaks to me now on a level that it, it, it's so much more meaningful and impactful today than it was back then. I, I still enjoy the action and I still I still enjoy it for all the same reasons that I, I did back then, but now it just has so many added layers and this movie is incredible. And what what is crazy to me about this movie is that the Wachowskis, they made this movie, this was only their second movie that they directed and it was it was like lightning in a bottle they have never been able to reproduce or or live up to that level again but in their defense i mean very few filmmakers ever achieve what they achieved so so the idea that they would be able to to uh you know, hit that again is, is unthinkable. I mean, it's just the, the odds are just astronomical. Uh, but they, they did it on this one and it's incredible. And I'm so glad we have it. And obviously I owned this movie. I owned it on DVD. I owned it on Blu-ray. And then when the, when the 4k came out, I had to have it. The Atmos soundtrack in this theater just sounds amazing. The picture looks great. They finally, they, on the 4k, they got the color grading, right? It looks incredible, and I'm so glad that I have this movie in my collection, and I'm so glad that I can watch it anytime I feel like it. Thanks for watching.